Hey everyone and welcome to Fresh from the Studio. Um, women in their work, artist members share what they're working on with you now. Um, we're pleased to have April Garcia, Darcy Book, and Sarah Luna present tonight. Um, each of these artists recently was in a group show together called the Femme Abstract. Um, they'll share some of their new work and upcoming projects with with us. Um, they'll have 10 minutes to present. And at the end of the presentations, we'll open it up for questions and comments. Feel free to chat any questions um, or thoughts you have during the presentations. And um, we'll address them at the end or the artist will chat you back. Um, after each presentation, at the end of all three, then we'll come together as a group and have a conversation. Um, you're at the end, you're welcome to share your upcoming programs with us. So let's start, if you're ready, with April. I'm ready. <laughs> um, so I just want to say thank you to you, Diane and Ali, for um, inviting me and uh, welcoming me, you know, into this awesome programming that you're doing with women in their work. Um, it really means a lot to me to be a part of this and uh, to be with the other artists, Darcy and Sarah. This is really awesome to, you know, do this together. So, um, so I'm April Garcia. Um, I'm a soft sculpture artist and um, I, you know, I do a lot of sewing by hand, um, a lot of, you know, using the sewing machine. Um, and so I have like some few items, some few sculptures I'm going to show you. And then I have like some pictures I'm going to show you as well. Um, so <laughs> I really like, um, you know, doing like, I guess this is like a latest piece. It's just, you know, a little rainbow flower. Um, I make these bases myself with concrete and wire and I just kind of sew petals and, um, you know, stuff. And so just kind of colorful. I kind of obsess about the kind of circle shape and kind of making it into a ball. Uh, this is kind of like a piece that's like just kind of a random piece that I just kind of mess around with. And then, um, I do have this one piece that I'm not done with and it's like kind of at this point like really kind of laughing at me in the studio <laughs> because I haven't been working on it it's just like but I really want to get back to working on this one again um so yeah I'm really kind of inspired by like you know Louise Bourgeois and Yayo Kusama and like um, I like, you know, obsessing about like, you know, m like multiples and like, I like um, kind of like wrapping like scraps and sewing them together, <laughs> making like these kind of blobby things. But um, I don't know, it's, it's always been about like exploring like the canvas and like how I'm going to I'm not sure. I can't hear you. You know, the idea, the, the feeling, like, what is it I'm trying to, you know, kind of speak through the medium, you know, but um, I don't know. I like being really, like, oof, playful and, like, kind of taking, like, you know, found soft animals and, like, <laughs> just creating this like mass of um a sculpture like this one i just keep adding to and i really love it a lot <laughs> um but i i don't know i feel like i like just kind of being really playful colorful um and just kind of keep exploring different ways to you know how you know what am i what am i wanting to make or you know I don't know, how am I gonna do it? Am I gonna use wood? Am I gonna use, so, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some pictures 
Um, am I? Uh, let's see. Uh oh. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it. Um, Allie? Oh, shit. Sure, I'll go ahead and screen share. Okay, but now I can't see my uh, Where'd you go? <sighs> okay. Where are you? Okay, there you are. Sorry. <laughs> my bad. Okay. Yeah, if you could do that. Sorry. I'm, I've been fiddling around really poorly. Thank you so much. You saved me. <laughs> I knew I, I was supposed to share this with you for a reason. <laughs> awesome. So I just wanted to like show kind of this little like process of how I've kind of gone through this journey of exploring like soft sculpture and stuff like that. So I like using vinyl toys. I've been making these concrete bases. And so the second slide is kind of where it like started. I was like using light, light fixtures and wire and kind of exploring kind of like these more like functional, I guess you could say, because I was trying to use a light fixture, um, but, you know, inspired by nature and stuff like that. And so it kind of continued on. Uh, you can see on the next slide, it's like you know, moonflowers and just kind of like these kind of grand kind of pieces. And, you know, like exploring materials with like zippers and, you know, is it going to hang on the wall? Is it going to stand by itself? Um, always just kind of like exploring that process. Um, so the next slide is what? Oh, yeah, dolls. So I'm like, I'm really inspired by artists that like make those vinyl toys and I kind of collect a lot of them. And so I, I kind of wanted to have my own kind of like personal, like collectible art dolls, you know, made by me kind of an idea. So this was me kind of exploring, like creating different characters and materials and stuff like that. And so community programming, I love doing like workshops with the community and like sharing my passion and love for like, you know, doing this medium and like, it's just fun, like really kind of connecting with the community and inspiring them to be creative, you know, so I love doing that. And I, yeah, so um, exploring kind of like costume design and incorporating my style with like that idea of wearable art. And so that was like, just kind of me exploring that. And then I think that's also kind of me taking my art doll and creating a wearable art piece um, for that, that event um, was called So Wasted. And so I made those two wearable pieces for that performance. Um, like exhibit with like all these other artists is really fun. <laughs> so that's Andrea Ariel um, wearing it and kind of doing some movements that we um, choreographed together and stuff like that. It was so much fun. <laughs> so um, that was the, that kind of monster with the large branchy heart, that's for Scottish Rite Theater that was um, kind of this monster in the play. And so it was supposed to be like, kind of like found materials and they created a monster in the play. It was crazy. And then the other one was um, kind of like a personal project, but I, um, I did it at the Native, or at the Art Bash, um, at the Native Hostel. And it was um, kind of like about emotional masking. It was like this performance piece about like being fine, but not fine. Um, so that was quite a learning experience for me. <laughs> it was kind of like my first personal like performance piece that I did, but, and so that's, you know, like, I'm always kind of exploring like what, how can I like 
use different materials and incorporate that with my soft sculpture style. So I started, I love like petrified wood. <laughs> I love collecting twigs and rocks and, and like petrified wood. And so I kind of just um, explored, you know, color and, and making this like natural, not natural kind of play. Um, more about like me, I like, you know, I think I'm a lot of my subconscious mind is inspired by nature a lot. So, you know, I think the, the you know, the, the circle shape, you know, is it's like a cell <laughs> or, you know, so, and I think there's just like, I can't, I, I, I need, I'm trying to do better about breaking out of that shape <laughs> and challenging myself to do that. Um, Let's see what's the next one. Okay, so last one. Um, so this is uh, the piece that I was showing you that's been like laughing at me <laughs> in the studio. That's inspired by Muffin Head. He's a costume designer in New York City. And I was like, hey, I'm really inspired by your work. I just like want to create like a sculpture kind of, you know, inspired by you. And he was like, yes, of course. But um, so yeah, so that's kind of what's kind of cooking in the studio like as far as my art, you know, it's just, I don't know, I'm trying to have fun and be in my happy place and <laughs> just explore shapes, not just like doing the circles, but like trying to always push myself to break out of like my ritual <laughs> that kind of like brings me my like, I don't know, my Zen, I suppose, in some ways, but um, yeah, that's, I think that's all I have. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for listening. Thanks so much, April. <laughs> Next up, we have Darcy Book. Um, hi, let me just get my screen share going. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I am a multidisciplinary artist and I focus primarily on sculptural painting and installation art. Um, a lot of my work involves sculpting and folding acrylic paint skins. So I'm gonna start out by showing you this, um, this like in process piece that's in, it has an example of, um, an acrylic paint skin uh, in process. So yeah, at its core, my practice is fueled by love for materials and like weird and innovative processes. And one of my main goals is to share the joy I experience from handling or even just looking at raw materials. And this process of using paint skins does a lot to preserve the vitality of wet paint as a raw material. So I create these paint skins by pouring thick pools of acrylic paint on the plastic sheeting and then letting the pools of paint dry for days and sometimes even like over a week, uh, depending on how big they are and how thick the paint is. Um, and then peeling the paint off. So this is like, this one's about eight feet um, long. This is when the paint's still wet. And I'm like manipulating the paint pool by using gravity um, to get different shapes. And so then these next pieces are just like finished works, um, starting with really small scale pieces in my mass series. So each of these is like about two inches in height and maybe like three to four inches in diameter. And all of them are either like pedestal based or like the pedestal based works or they sit on floating shelves. 
and they're still made out of those paint skins that, that I was talking about. And same with this work, um, except for they hang on the wall. <laughs> um, so like this one uh, is part of my fan series. And these are handkerchiefs. And they have a lot of fun experimenting with different patterns and um, mixing my own paints, using different iridescent uh, pigments and textures and installing these in different formations. It's another install shot to give you a sense of scale. And I like pairing these with different materials like uh, I've started incorporating spray foam in some of the work. And then, so this is, I guess like a medium, smallish size painting, maybe like uh, 14 inches in width. But the, uh, the paint skin that I folded onto this piece it's probably like six or seven feet long. So it's this like ridiculously heavy, compact little, little painting. And this painting is also pretty small. So it's, I think it was like 10 feet vertically and then like 13, oh no, I think I said feet just now and I did not mean that. <laughs> um, so 10 inches vertically and then uh, 13. Uh, Widthwise, I would love to see this in 10, 10 feet high though. That would be super cool. But um, it does stick out from the wall about five or six inches. And I really enjoy doing that with this paint and playing with the shadows. Which is true for all of this work. And these are sort of organized, um, these wall hanging sculptural paintings are organized like smallest to, to largest. And here's a detail of uh, the textural surface. And now this, uh, this is a temporary installation and it's titled Giving the Game Away. It was part of the Femme Abstract exhibition earlier this year curated by Moya McIntyre. And its dimensions are nine feet high uh, by 16 feet wide. And um, so April, Luna, and I were in this exhibition together, which is super cool. Um, and Diane mentioned, mentioned that already. But uh, with this work, I employ a sort of alchemy, meaning I use commonplace materials, only acrylic paint, metal leaf, and plywood or foam board but the way they interact creates a sort of magical experience. For one thing, there's an otherworldly glow created by the fluorescent color fields reflected into the gold leaf. Even if you know what's happening, it doesn't quite compute and it really still appears that there are LED lights hidden somewhere in the sculptural forms, but there aren't. So like, I know that, I mean, obviously I know this, but <laughs> like even when, when I'm looking at my own work on this scale, it still looks like it's lit from the inside. Um, giving the game away is inspired by our collective vulnerability at this moment in history. There's a silver lining to the simultaneous crises we've been experiencing. <laughs> Um, so people are more readily opening up to share their interior lives and emotions. Through our common vulnerability, we find an increased sense of empathy, and this empathy is a necessary ingredient for lasting change. This installation references our inner thoughts, dreams, fears, and desires spilling to the surface through the use of ethereal and material mediums reflected light and acrylic paint respectively. The fluorescent paint color fields reflected into metal leaf and the thick paint pools spilling onto the floor 
each represent different components of our inner world surfacing of secret lives being revealed. I've envisioned that this precise moment of our secret lives being revealed is like a door cracking open and flooding light into a very dark room. My vision and the physical reality of this installation were instantly fused with the following words from Amanda Gorman's inaugural poem as I heard them spoken this past January. There is always light, if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. And uh, I really wanna emphasize that there's strength and power in vulnerability. It's challenging and it's uncomfortable to be vulnerable and that's a good thing. Um, so these next few images are by photographer Lisa House. Um, and they're of a, this dance performance choreographed by Je Jennifer Sherburn and the cast of Elsewhere, um, inspired by the work in the Femme Abstract exhibition. And then these images show a bit of the lineage of this installation work, you know, where I'm pairing the material with the ethereal um, and the hyperphysicality of the acrylic paint skins with the reflected color fields created by metal leaf. So that piece was from the Baltimore Museum of Art. This one's from School 33 Art Center. This piece is my Tempo project um, from you know, art, Austin Art and Public Places. And it's going to be installed in the Dimensions Sculpture Park very soon. Um, and then speaking of, uh, or I guess back to the topic of vulnerability, um, I'm going to share with you this total experiment I'm working on and haven't shown anyone else so far. Um, so this might seem totally out of left field because of the medium. But alongside my paintings and draw and installations, I've never stopped drawing. I just don't have the bandwidth to like share my drawings publicly all the time. But this work is still really different from my usual drawing practice. Um, I'm creating all these drawings by spitting charcoal onto paper or by sort of painting onto the paper using my tongue. Um, so these are primarily about moving energy through and out of my body, like purging negative crap um, and not holding on to it. Um, so they aren't as much about aesthetics, but about movement and action and how to let things go. And I totally, yeah, just about out of time. Uh, so, very last thing, I'm also excited about this series that I started last fall. Uh, it's a reconfigurable abstract narrative. So it'll be very different every time I install it. Um, some drawings will be added, some will be removed, and it'll have a different overall meaning and story every time. And that's my contact info. And thank you all so much for joining us today. Thanks so much, Darcy. Next up is Sarah Luna. Hi, everyone. So great to, uh, to see your work, April and Darcy. It's, it's really inspiring. Um, so my name is Sarah Luna. And I just want to shout out to women and their work for, for everything you do for women artists. and. Um, for having us on this, this really valuable program. Um, so I'm originally from the UK. I've been in Austin since the early 90s. I'm a contemplative artist, um, have a background in yoga, meditation and spiritual psychology, which informs my work. I explore both the human and the energetic divine uh, nature of our experience. 
my work seeks to evoke a meditative state um, or response in the viewer, kind of hoping to provide a moment to pause and reflect and meet ourselves and life and um, be with the collective humanity and perhaps even connect with something beyond the visible. So I'm getting ready for a solo exhibition at the Doherty Arts Center, which opens on June 28th and it runs through the end of August. So it's a nice long run. Um, it was actually originally scheduled for August 2020, um, but was delayed due to the pandemic. So I'm very excited it's finally going to happen. <laughs> it's, it's been a long wait. <laughs> um, the exhibit is entitled Luminous Moments. And um, I'm going to show you um, a few pieces and talk through them. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. So as I said, the, the exhibit's entitled Luminous Moments, A Visual Refuge. And the body of work in this exhibit expresses abstract concepts beyond what the eye can see. It's an exploration of how we and everything in existence are luminous moments in time. It's the story of how we come into being, the experience of being fully embodied and the impermanence of that experience. So my intention with this exhibit is to create a refuge, a quiet space to sit and contemplate, a respite from the busy outside world, and perhaps an opportunity to slow down, be with the work, be present, be with yourself. So I'll begin a little bit about it by explaining a little bit about my process. I create the images by photographing small, simple paper assemblages. I play with light, shadow, movement and exposure to abstract the forms. The digital images are printed on archival paper and mounted onto maple panels. I then apply an overlay of cold wax to the surface. And as I'm, as I'm applying the wax, I'm sort of massaging the piece and in, 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 um, instilling it with calm, loving energy. The wax serves as a protective layer and it, and it also further softens and um, diffuses the image. So each piece in the exhibit alludes to energy and consciousness and the nature of our existence. The images reflect who we are on a deeper level. So I enjoy playing with words. My titles are very intentional. The words and their meanings play an important role. I'm using colons in the titles as a way of expressing a moment to pause and take a breath. So this first image called embody. And the meaning of it is to give a tangible bodily form to a spiritual and entity to unite as a whole. Embodiments at the core of my work and I see embodiment as aliveness and presence. So we're embodied energy and we're fully alive when we can be present to ourselves and to our human experience. That's to say our senses, our thoughts and our feelings. This next image is called Remember just to become aware of again, of something forgotten, to bring back to one's consciousness, to recall. 
and um, the Latin root is re and memor, mindful. So to again be mindful. Because we forget, <laughs> we disconnect or dissociate from our bodies and ourselves and our experience, whether we're rushing or caught in judgment or seeking distractions. Right? We all do it, it's a very human thing. And life constantly teaches us to come home to ourselves, to remember who we truly are, both our embodied selves and our energetic infinite self. This next image is called Relate. To form a connection between people or things or to establish a social relationship with a person or thing. So this one is part of a series about relationship and interconnectedness. We're social beings, we're hardwired to connect. When we remember to be embodied, to be present, we're able to relate to ourselves, to others, and to live life more fully with acceptance of the highs and the lows, the great and the not so great. So the shadows in this image crossing are symbolic of how we encounter light and shadow in ourselves, in each other and in life. So life is a 50-50 deal. <laughs> this next image belong to be part of or to be acceptable. And we all yearn to belong. One of the most hu basic human needs is to be accepted, to belong. It's a primal need rooted in our survival. Healthy embodied relating strengthens our sense of belonging. I'm also alluding here to the idea that everything belongs, even if our thoughts might tell us otherwise, especially when it comes to events in our lives that are uncomfortable or disappointing. It's sort of that, that sense of it, it all belongs. And the final image here, exhale, means to expel breath or to breathe out. So as you go through my exhibit, this will be the final piece that you see. It's an invitation to let go, to release, to relax the nervous system. And it also speaks to the last thing that we do in this body. Our final act of life is to exhale. It's an embodied act of leaving the body. So that's the sneak peek, guys. Um, thank you so much for listening. And I hope you're able to take a moment to go see my exhibition. Again, it opens on June 28th at the Doherty Arts Centre. The viewing is by appointment on, event, on Eventbrite. Um, the link is on my Instagram profile and perhaps Ali could also put it in the chat. That would be great. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I want to thank you all so much for sharing your work with us today. Um, and I'll go ahead and drop all of the Instagram links and artist websites into the chat and I'll pull up your events bright link as well, Sarah. Um, so I wanted to give any of our um, audience members here a moment to share anything that they have upcoming. Um, I also want to give room for any questions that anyone has for any of the artists. To answer, feel free to type those into the chat and I can ask them for you or feel free to just unmute and ask the questions directly. Um, and feel free to share anything that you have going on, upcoming events, links to your Instagram profiles, anything that you'd like in the chat as well. So I'll go ahead and open up for questions now. I'm sorry, I missed out on everything. I'm, my internet. <laughs> Oh, well. Darcy, I have a question for you. Like, you know, 
how long have you been doing the these beautiful like liquidy paintings that, like how long have you been doing this it's just like so beautiful to me like how you sculpt these pieces oh thank you um yeah. i think officially maybe since like 2005 it, it's hard it's, it's a hard question because <laughs> there was um uh, maybe a little earlier there is this weird overlap time period where like because the way it started was that um it didn't start on purpose so I was pouring paint and the paint spilled over the edges and then I became much more interested in the paint that had spilled over the edges and then these drops and I kind of like peripherally started folding and shaping them. And then I was like, ah, this isn't what I'm supposed to be focused on, you know? So if I count that, when I was telling myself to not do it, basically, then it was like, you know, 2002, like around 2002, 2001. That's cool. Yeah. So more of like, kind of like this over time, kind of like you kept, it kept like speaking to you and calling you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then like, I really got into it in earnest. And I was like, okay, I'm sculpting paint. I'm all in. <laughs> like maybe, I think, I'm really bad with time, by the way. <laughs> what year? When did this happen? Like, so probably maybe 2005. It's been a while. It's, I cannot believe it's 2021. Right? So yeah, yeah on and off since, since like for like 15 years, 16 That's years. Cool. That's awesome. We had a couple of questions in the chat um, for you, Darcy. Do you have to heat the dried paint to fold it or does it fold naturally? And what gives you inspiration to start a piece April? Um, okay, so I do not have to heat, ooh, um, I do not have to heat the paint um, to fold it. And this, so this is a semi-recently poured smallish paint skin. So, um, so it, this has just been sitting over there in the corner. It's a scrap that I'm going to use for something uh it, heating it with my hands can be helpful to get it to stick to itself for certain things like uh making these mass paintings right but i do not need to use a heat gun or anything else it does take some finesse and it, it should be like within a certain range like i shouldn't let it sit around for too long and get brittle um or be too thin or use like the wrong type of acrylic paint. So there are a bunch of weird things that I've experimented with over time, but no, I don't have to heat it. Simple answer. So <laughs> That's cool. That's a good question. Uh, for um, inspiration, you know, I do, I'm inspired by nature. I'm inspired by the process of kind of exploring, you know, my my happy medium, my happy place. Um, yeah, I like exploring kind of materials to kind of incorporate, uh, you know, with my soft sculpture. Um, sometimes it's just kind of like, I'm just going for it. Sometimes I'm, I've got a feeling inside my heart or like maybe like a funny little thing, go, like a something in my head that I keep thinking about and obsessing about. Um, I don't know, it's kind of all over the place, I guess you could say my inspiration, but I'm also just, you know, people in, in the community, the amazing artists in our community, um, they, they really inspire me too, you know? So, yeah. Great, thank you. Thank you. We had another question for you, Sarah. Um, so do you create the titles before you make the work and does the title sort of inspire the work or do you make this piece and then you're inspired by 
the piece to create these titles? Good question. It depends on the piece. Um, sometimes the piece, most often actually, the pieces are, are quite a, it's quite a spontaneous process. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm, my process is even as I'm in process, I'm practicing embodiment and presence and, you know, I'm breathing and, and I'm trying to be really present to what I'm doing in the moment. So that's part of the work. Um, so that's how it, it comes in. Um, and then some pieces like relate, that was very deliberate. Like I wanted to create a piece that, that spoke to relationship and relating. And um, so that one I really played with to, to get that. And I see on here too, there's a question about how I develop my work. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's not computer, ge computer generated. It's all created with the lens, um, mm -hmm. uh, my camera lens with motion and light. Um, I do do, you know, some development in Lightroom, tweaking contrast and but, um, I'm actually pretty Photoshop illiterate <laughs> to be honest. So um, yeah, it's, it's really all done in the shooting. Sarah, do you use film or do you, are you doing digital? Digital, yeah. I have a question for you, April. I, I was really um, intrigued and I just a comment on um, the Bazaarby pieces. You know, it just struck me that, you know, Barbie is bizarre and outrageous, right? <laughs> just in of herself and I love that you've sort of taken it to this whole nother level of like yeah this is just a nutty a nutty thing you know and um and I love that you've taken your work to a performance level and I was wondering you know if you could say a little more about that and what your intention is with with your performance work yeah you know um I grew up doing theater and um and I've, I've recently, well, so it's been a while, but um, I was lucky to do some work with Scottish Rite Theater as well. And so, you know, I kind of like, I was living in these world that, you know, like I was my, I was my visual artist, you know, making these things, you know, sculptures. And then I was doing the stage work and doing costuming. And I think like, I'm just kind of inspired by where those two cross for me. Um, and so, you know, like I created this, um, I don't know if I can grab it. It's so high up there. <laughs> I made this, it's super dusty too, but I made this like, um, kind of like clown helmet like thing. Amazing. <laughs> and so, you know, just like, this is like a, tin, like a baking tin and made palms and kind of tool and, and it's, you know, with wire and stuff, but, um, I just kind of, I'm really interested in kind of like exploring that, you know, that, that performance and the love of kind of costume design and, and, you know, constructing, um, I made this little black thing, um, recently and I like took a lot of scraps and I just started wrapping my face and kind of, um, you know, experimenting with video and um, just, I, I kind of want to play in that area. Um, and I made this little piece um, after a friend passed, I made this like little hat and it's got like these tears coming down. And so I want to like figure out a, a body, you know, draping situation with that and kind of maybe make some video or take some photography, you know, I don't know. I just kind of want to play in that little space. So yeah, I, 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 it's just kind of, it's, it's this world that's always kind of called me, you know, theater and performance. And um, so it's, it's, it's where I kind of want to explore. <laughs> I like exploring and having fun and, you know, seeing what happens. 
the having fun definitely shows. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> really, yeah. <laughs> so joyful. That yeah. makes me happy. I'd love to see those videos. Yeah, um, on YouTube, they're on YouTube. Um, it's it's this. It's so wasted. It's called So Wasted with Los Outsiders. Um, they they did this during um, the what's that performance festival? Um, oh, what is it called? I forget. It's just like a bunch of performances in town. Um, but anyways, it, yeah, it was um, you know Michael Garcia and Jaime. Um, Castillo, I think that's right. Anyways, Los Outsiders, you know, kind of curated this thing. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a good challenge. Ariel, and we, you know, I made the cost, the pieces, the sculptural wearable, you know, pieces, and then we just collaborated. And I love collaborating. Like that's the, the sweet spot for me. It's like, you know, playing and yeah just kind of going for it. I like yeah, that. I guess, so your more recent stuff where you're talking about like wrapping, you know, the piece you just had, the black one, like wrapping that around, is that separate or is that part of the Los Outsiders? You know, Michael uh, was doing this video piece where he was asking people from the community to send him video work. And so I was inspired by that and I, I made that video piece for his piece. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm inspired. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to make myself into a sculpture is basically what I remember like being like, I'm going to make my head into a sculpture and I'm going to wrap it <laughs> and I'm going to put my hat on and I'm going to take pictures and we're going to see what happens. So, so I'm, yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm inspired by, you know, the people in, you know, the artists in, the, in our community. And um, so he kind of like pushed me in that way, you know, with his work. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. I love all of the different ways each of your work is soothing. Gabriel, your work is so bright and soft and playful and very tactile. Darcy, your work is also so tactile and like flowy and just the like weight of the material too feels really soothing and Luna obviously the minimalism and ethereal kind of gauziness each each one has such a different way of engaging with the concept but I feel like it really fits and it's cool to see the juxtaposition between them I like that yeah I I feel it <laughs> now that you say you put it in those words I'm like yes I feel that too <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you for saying that. And I, I want to bring to attention what um, what Claire said in the chat after everyone saw it that the you know Darcy using the paint as skin it's sort of that we're we're all referring to the body you know Darcy using the paint as skin and people's celebration of the body through costume and movement and my embodiment of so, you know our physical and spiritual processes. It's, it's great to see the, the interconnectedness, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's really cool. We had another question for you, Darcy. Uh, what kind of charcoal did you spit out and do you chew it up? Oh, um, so it's an activated charcoal, like edible charcoal that you can, the kind you can get and like brush your teeth with. Okay. Um, or swallow as like a detox kind of deal. Um, and I think it's like technically, not te technically, I don't know why I'm using this word. Um, so it's burned coconut husk, I believe. But I, so it's already very, very, very fine powder. And I just mixed it with water, which is probably unnecessary. I could probably just put a little powder in my mouth. Um, but yeah, so no real need to chew it up. It's kind of a weird, uncomfortable process though, to like keep doing and it's ridiculously messy. I mean, of course, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've brushed my teeth with charcoal. Um, I haven't recently, but I've done it before, yeah. And you don't really need a whole lot because it, 
it's <laughs> it's very you know dark you know pigment like yeah it's dark <laughs> but yeah. I think that's really cool I love how you're 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 using your tongue and the movement um I think that's really really awesome I like that yeah what is what inspired you to do that Darcy were you brushing your teeth with charcoal one day and it just happened or <laughs> Oh, it's funny actually because I got the charcoal for that purpose <laughs> and then I like I used it a little bit and then I kind of like fell out of the habit and it was just sitting there for a long time and um, then I had thought about like when I was much much younger I did body painting a little bit but using house paint which at the time I didn't realize that was a super toxic terrible thing to do um, but I missed painting with my body and then I thought about charcoal so in some of those drawings that um like the watercolor drawings I use my hands and my face a little bit to um to paint with with the charcoal so it had occurred to me that I could do that safely and then the charcoal sat for a while longer um, still not being used in my, my mouth for brushing my teeth <laughs> but um I don't know what how I really don't know exactly how this idea came up for like spitting it but I think it was more like this thing that I need to do to just it came more from like getting this energy out it's just something that like historically I just hold on to shit excuse my language but like I it's like I find this different all these different ways to you know like get energy moving and like stop doing this but it's something you know it's, I'm so used to um you know letting things sort of wallow I guess or like having negative memories like come back and then come back again and I'm like oh my god I thought I dealt with this right so I think I was just thinking through like how can I really get get it moving like get it out, get it out. Like, what can I do? And this connection like came up with art and just picturing like spitting out this like black charcoal <laughs> and making, creating something beautiful in the process because it is beautiful, right? Just like letting things go and like pushing, like having that sort of um, movement, you know? So yeah, simple answer, I, I don't know. I totally yeah. relate to that. Uh, like the the re releasing. Um, I have this one piece. It's uh, called uh, Cabeza de Cucuy. It's the head of the boogeyman. Mm -hmm. And I was wasn't like really happy about some like somebody. <laughs> and I like, literally like I was just like, I want to get this out of me, this feeling. And so I grabbed all the scraps. And I started wrapping and it's wrapping and wrapping and wrapping and I wrapped this like ball and it was like I knew what I wanted to make and it was just like this wrapped ball and then the two little black horns of like this black sequins and it was just kind of like kind of like capturing this this demon that was kind of festering inside me and it was just kind of like I release you <laughs> through my like my art process. Um, yeah, I totally relate to that, like needing to like release like these, these, this feeling inside of me. And I like, I like, I like the wrapping motion when I'm like needing to release. Yeah. Yeah. I love that piece of yours too. Thank it you. totally stood out to me. <laughs> I love that That's piece. So I, it felt yeah. really good to make. It was a real quick one, but it just had so much like energy and emotion like put into it, you know, and it was like really simple, you know, like mm -hmm. just scraps, wrapping, and like two pieces of like, you know, this material that I had. And it was just like, let's go get this <laughs> out of me right now. <laughs> Totally I would relate. say that's that's another thing our work has in common, you know, energy and emotion and mm -hmm. light and shadow, you know, we're kind of all playing with, with those concepts too, aren't we? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I love that, like how 
there are these, you know, obviously like major aesthetic differences, but, you know, especially like hearing the two of you talk more about your work and, you know, it makes more sense that I'm so drawn to, you know, to your work. <laughs> and there are so many similarities. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. It's always so fun to see the through line of these uh, works in Fresh from the Studio that seem kind of all over the place or maybe random. And then when you all start talking about things, there's always something that connects the work together. So it's really cool to hear you all talk a little bit more about. Um, I wanted to go ahead and share a couple of upcoming things that we have with women in their work. Um, and in the meantime, if anyone has anything they wanna share and just drop into the chat, um, you can feel free to do that now. Um, so we have an upcoming workshop series with 2D animation rotoscoping with artist Ariel Renee Jackson. And um, that is a three part series and you can find that on our website. Um, after that, we have our homecoming celebration on July 10th and you can find more information and tickets about that. There'll be a photo booth, food, drinks and an all-star art sale. And then finally, we have our inaugural exhibition coming up on July 24th. Um, we know who we are, we know what we want, featuring nine um, women artists, and all of that can be found on our website too. Um, I also wanted to say thank you one more time to all of you for presenting today. It was so fun to see all of your work and a little sneak peek into what's going on in your studios. It's so cool to see all of the stuff behind you, April and Darcy, all of your painting stuff going on. So thank you so much. Thanks for having us. <laughs> thank you all. Oh, and I also wanted to let you know, I dropped the link to sign up for uh, Luna's exhibition into the chat as well. So thanks for sharing that. I hope to come check it out myself soon. Great. <laughs>